All right, welcome back everybody. My name's Austin with just about two days remaining until Bitcoin's third halving ever. Cryptocurrency is making news. We're talking about Ethereum. We're talking about Binance coin. We're talking about the crypto market. So hit the like button. But first, let's start with Bitcoin. Every conceivable Bitcoin metric is on fire right now. Let's start with big picture. Bitcoin profitable days are around 95.4%. Meaning no matter when you bought Bitcoin, 95% of the time, you are now profitable. Only in these red zones right here, these peaks, are we still hodling. Now, the unfortunate thing, the human nature part of all this is during these peaks, during these FOMO, is when the majority of people come into Bitcoin. But the lesson here, if you take one thing away from this, especially if you're new as a Bitcoiner, hodl. The lesson here is to hodl. The people that bought at the peak of, let's say, 2014 had to hold for what? Over two years until they were profitable. If you bought right here today and Bitcoin tanks for the next six months, how long are you willing to hold? Something to think about. And before we get to Ethereum, Bitcoin metrics are popping off. Some we've mentioned, some we haven't. Let's look at this as a whole. The number of daily active Bitcoin addresses has grown around 47% since the beginning of 2020. For perspective, that's a growth rate Bitcoin's network hasn't seen since the go-go days of 2017. Now, this means two things. This means that OGs are maybe diversifying, getting more than one Bitcoin address. This also means that new people are getting their first Bitcoin address. According to Glassnode data, the number of new Bitcoin addresses that have sent their first transaction is nearing half a million. And for perspective, this number just passed the May 2017 peak this week after it passed 491 hundred-thousand. So we are not quite near the December 2017 peak of 800k, but we're close. Could we be mirroring a 2017 run? Nobody knows the future, but these numbers are bullish. Okay, so as a subscriber to this channel, as a Bitcoin hodler, what's the point? Well, the point is these metrics are obviously probably popping off because of the fundamental event we're about to witness. So let's talk about that, the Bitcoin block reward having, And let me offer you some perspective from Willy Woo. A lot of us always just ask questions about price. What's the price gonna be? Well, I wanna offer you some perspective on sell pressure, which we can use and we can learn to sort of help us understand where the price might be in six months. So post this 2020 having, miners will cease to be the biggest sellers of Bitcoin. It'll be the dawn of the crypto exchange as the leading seller. Wow. Okay, well, yes, obviously in two days, the miners' sell pressure is going to get cut in half. But exchanges, interesting. The biggest sell pressure on Bitcoin will soon be from the exchanges selling their BTC fees collected into fiat. I'm going to like this, support this. Let's dig deeper. You can think of exchanges as tax agents on traders. That tax extracted in fees in BTC gets dumped onto the market and sold for fiat. It's similar to miners where coins gained by diluting the supply get dumped onto the market that new demand needs to absorb. And yes, this is something that has changed drastically since pre-2013 and has we've seen we saw exchanges in 2017. Obviously, Binance it was just started, it was barely alive, but now especially in 2020, exchanges rule the market, and they make fees, they make revenue off their fees per day. And to be clear, we're specifically talking about exchange fees, not specifically traders. This is very different from traders buying or selling. When we say traders are buying or traders are selling, this is a myth because every trade is matched. For every buyer, there's a seller. For every seller, there's a buyer. It's, it's pretty even. Really, when we say the market is buying or selling, what we actually mean is smart money is buying or selling. But point is, if not individual traders, what is the biggest sell pressure on the Bitcoin price? Well, there's only two unmatched sell pressures on the market. Miners who dilute the supply and sell onto the market. This is the hidden tax via monetary inflation, right? Miners were very aware of. And two, especially in the modern age, the exchanges who tax the traders and sell onto the market. For example, with the rise of BitMEX and now strong competing futures exchanges all pushing billions of dollars in daily trade volume, the picture looks like this. Right now, pre-having, we have about 1,800 BTC per day 
that the miners mine and thus are dumped into the ecosystem. After the halving, that cell pressure gets cut in half to 900 BTC per day from miners post halving. But from exchanges, we have around 1200 BTC per day in exchange fees. Now, this doesn't mean that 100% are getting converted and sold. Just like when we mine 1800 BTC per day from miners, not all of them are getting sold, but a percentage of them are. Now, what can you do? Not much. This is just the reality of being a Bitcoiner in 2020. But when I look at the long term price chart of BTC USD from 2017 to today, the rise of the BitMEX style futures exchanges has made an irrevocable footprint on the price. We have much more sideways action now from the additional sell pressure. So the takeaway is this fundamentally, nothing has changed for Bitcoin. Time frame wise, though, we now have extra sell pressure from these exchanges. Again, we didn't have the first exchanges until 2013. We had minimal exchanges in the years after and in 2020, man, exchanges, in a sense, rule the market. So maybe the four year cycle turns into the five year cycle. Again, fundamentally, nothing has changed. But are you willing to hodl? While futures exchanges bring liquidity to the market, which is good, offer useful hedging for legitimate use cases, which is good, they will bring the largest bearish pressure on Bitcoin from here on in. Something to consider. Next piece of news, Consensus's Ethereal Summit is happening right now. So we're getting major news from these altcoins. Before Binance, let's check in on Ethereum, actually from Ethereum co-founder Joseph Lubin, some direct quotes we will get back to selling a lot of tokens, obviously referring to around 2017, where every company could build their token on Ethereum. Now, those were ICOs. The SEC obviously had a problem with that. The two takeaways that Lubin is conveying to us is, if you follow SEC guidelines, you can launch a clean utility token, he told the hosts. Lubin also hinted at structural changes in his company consensus in the near future. So can you launch utility tokens off of Ethereum? Usually they would be security tokens and you'd have to clear them with the SEC. But let's find out. The conversation began with the history of Ethereum, where Lubin was one of the five co-founders and delved into how consensus has changed, particularly after its recent spat of layoffs. So in the first few years, consensus we know drove a lot of the initial coin offering activity as a way to crowdfund the projects it was incubating. But that has slowed in 2018 when regulatory action in this space picked up. Well, the SEC sees crowdfunding to the public with ICOs as sort of preying on the public. So what exactly is Lubin saying? Now Lubin said he wants to get back into selling tokens, but in a different vein. It is all about how you sell them and how you market them, Lubin said of token launches. You could sell a utility token, and if you do your legal homework, so what is this legal homework that will allow the SEC to accept this? Well, if you ensure you are not selling in huge quantities to speculators, and you do certain things based on the guidance from the SEC, like basically proving buyers of the token are using it before you open it up for trading, then you've got a clean utility token, he said. So it looks like Ethereum doesn't want to lose one of its main use cases, which is the ability to launch other tokens on top of them. Now, in my opinion, it's never going to be like the 2017 days for Ethereum, simply because we now have major competition. There's Binance Chain, there's EOS, there's all these Ethereum killers. And also, if investors expect profit in any way, if it's marketed as such, then it has to be declared a security token. So we'll see. Next piece of news, Binance doesn't have a headquarters because Bitcoin doesn't. Again, we're getting a lot of direct quotes from these project leaders because of Consensus's Ethereal Summit happening now. To kick off this summit, Unchained podcast host Laura Shin held a cozy fireside chat with CZ. But the big question came when she asked, where is Binance? Where's the headquarters then? And this seemingly simple question is actually more complex. Until February, Binance was considered to be based in Malta. However, that changed when the island European nation announced that no, Binance is not headquartered here. Binance is not under our jurisdiction. Well, since then, Binance has not said just where exactly it is now headquartered. 
wherever I sit is going to be the Binance office. Wherever I need somebody is going to be the Binance office, okay? Well, for me personally, it doesn't really matter if he claims he has a headquarters or not. To me, to the regulators, the strictest regulators, maybe like people in the US, I could see that mattering. For example, if he's not under Malta jurisdiction, what jurisdiction is he under? I think those questions and answers would matter to some of these regulators if he wants to better break in to these different markets. You tell me what you think. That's the video for today. My name's Austin. See you tomorrow.